So the, now let's look at the second, the second, the second side of empathy, right? So like I said at the top, empathy, in my opinion, is two parts. It's a felt experience and it involves actively listening to the other person. And this active listening part, this is really the tools um, of how we can work through the gunk of what they throw out there. So this is trying to get at some of the tools we have to, instead of getting caught up in the words Joe uses or the words Sarah uses, but like get through that, which is hard, and then get to the ooey gooey feelings underneath that we can all connect with. That's more real, as many people were talking about, than all the fake it. distractions. Okay. Yeah. So, I, I always say that you gotta look for um, reasons to agree, you know, like mm -hmm. things that you have in common. Yeah. Because if you focus on things that you do agree, uh, you know, a common goal, uh -huh. you, can, that you get somewhere, but if you yeah. focus on, like, disagreements, you just... Clashes. Yeah. 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 We want to find that, that sharedness. Yeah. Insightful at all. I, I, like that. I needed to get it out. I appreciate it. I'm glad you did get it out, and I'm glad I heard it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, the next exercise is... Um, these statement pairs, um, and I'm just going to read them because they're quick. Uh, but these statement pairs, and I want people to uh, try to answer, there's, uh, there's just one question, it's just, um, is person B uh, giving active listening empathy? That's, that's, that's all we're trying to figure out, is whether person B is trying to, is giving active listening empathy. So anyway, so, so statement pair number one, there are four of them. Person A says, how could I do such a stupid thing? I'm such an idiot. Person B responds, nobody's perfect. It's okay. What you did wasn't the worst thing in the world. So now do people, how do people, do people think that, um, that, that, that person B is doing active listening or is, is giving empathy. No, why do you think not? I think he's being too broad with his answer. Like he's kind of generalizing. You know, generalizing. Like, I feel like he's not actually paying attention or like not didn't think of like a constructive answer to, you know, mm -hmm. make a person feel better. Mm -hmm. Actually not listen. Yeah. Now you may you don't feel so what I'm hearing is that if you were person A, you wouldn't feel like you were no, being you were being heard. Mm -hmm. No. You would think the other person wasn't listening yeah. at all. I have uh you and then you I don't know who raised hands first. I was just going to say, like, I'll let him go first. I'm sure. Gonna, I think a real active listening mm -hmm. there would have been a question. So what did the, what that person do? You're yeah. just like, yeah, it's fine. You right. don't even know what they did. Yeah, they don't know what they did. Yeah. The, maybe their thought processes aren't on the same track, but mm -hmm. it might be general instead of because of them not. You know. <laughs> exactly. It's, it might just be because you don't want to think about what the thoughts are. Exactly. We're connecting uh -huh. to a feeling. You're like, okay, it's cool. Right. What happened, you're fine. We're Everything's okay. It wasn't the worst thing in the world like exactly. you thought it was. We're still sticking with thoughts there. Yeah. You have something in the back? Yeah. I just, I feel like it doesn't go against at all the fact that the other person is calling themselves an idiot and that they did something stupid. It's just like, oh, no one's perfect. Like, yeah, a lot of people are idiots. Like, there's a lot of really bad things in the world. You don't need anywhere near that. Like, there's no, like, ah, oh, like, it wasn't that bad, man. Like, really, like, no one noticed or, like, something like that. You know, it was just, there's nothing positive in it. It's just, like, it could have been way worse, but it could have been, like, the worst thing possible, but uh, I guess it wasn't, but. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to take these two, and then we're going to move on. All right, off. Yeah. Um, yeah, to me, it just seems like if I heard that, it'd feel patronizing, like, oh, mm. congratulations, you thought of the right thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, you check that box. Right. right. This kind of seems kind of obvious to me, but relating it back to how you were talking about feelings, uh -huh. I would have to say that the best way to connect with that person and ask them why they feel that they are stupid or an idiot, instead of telling them, you know, it's okay, you know? And then relating to them with why they feel that way. And, yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Everyone raised excellent points, which I love. Um, I'm just going to move this forward because time. Um, so statement pair two. Oh, the other thing I was going to say, how many of us see ourselves saying person B's words at a party? 
but you're saying that at a party. You're not doing it at a time when you're really connecting with the person. You're doing it because you want to get back to the party. But anyways, so sit in there number two. Person A says, I'm so mad at Steve. He never does the work he volunteers for. Person B responds, you feel like Steve doesn't contribute enough to the group. Now is, is person B giving active listening empathy? I think so. He's trying to elaborate. Uh-huh. Guy in the back. I think he's, person B is really trying to understand why person A is actually feeling about the situation the way he is. Trying to get to the root cause of it. active listening but not empathizing mm. like you heard and you're getting there but you don't <coughs> feel what they're feeling yet yeah yeah my personal opinion on it is closer to that um, so let me let me maybe clarify this out this was a little bit of a tricky one I put in there because I used the word feel because often people will use the word feel when they're talking about a thought they're trying to trick you because um, because uh, uh, person A doesn't feel uh, that Steve doesn't contribute enough to the group. Person A thinks Steve doesn't contribute enough to the group. Person A may feel unsupported. Person A may feel like he or she doesn't have enough help, but that doesn't have to come from Steve. More people in the group than Steve is. <coughs> so Steve doesn't have to be, and we're going to get into that in a, a little bit later, um, but if, if we're talking about individual people, we're rarely talking about a need. There may be, there's going to be, there's probably a need underneath that. But rarely, if we're talking about just one individual person, at the surface level, at least, we're not talking about. We're talking about I want person X to do X Y Z, and when they don't do X Y Z, I'm mad. And uh, and that's not about I don't need person X to do X Y Z. I just need someone to do it. Doesn't matter if it's Karen or if it's Mike. It could, could be Karen or Mike and both of them or no one, neither of them in person Z, you know. So, um, so that's something I, I, I put in there as a trick. Um, try and trick y'all too. Um, it's all about tricks. So, is there any other uh, pressing things people want to say about statement pair two? Yeah. Um, active <coughs> listening, active you. Um, it takes trying to understand, and you have to ask questions to understand stuff. Questions are important. It's, show, I mean, yeah. uh, it's showing that that you're asking questions like shows empathy in itself. Mm. You know, because you're trying. To you're trying. You're at least trying. You're making an effort, and that is better than what person is doing for you know. Seems a little better than what the first pair did. Yeah, step in the right direction. He wasn't, yeah, first one they were trying. You just like you said, want to get back to the party. Yeah. The other thing is like it almost kind of seems like person B might not be listening. He's like, mm -hmm. he's the first person just said, you know, like I'm, I'm unhappy. And he expressed the fact that he was unhappy with one particular person, and he was like, oh, you, you're not happy with him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a restatement. Yeah. yeah. So let's go to statement pair three. Um, so statement pair three. Person A says, uh, I get so exhausted when all I do is go from meeting to meeting with short breaks in between, in which I make copies, study, take exams, and publicize the next event. I don't know, it sounded like a break to me. Person B, oh, I so know how you feel. I'm always running around with a million things to do, too. Now, do people feel, how do, do people think that person B is giving any sort of empathetic, active listening there? I have a blue shirt. That's there, it. There, there. I would say absolutely not because we tend to think that when people are telling us something that they want advice or they want us to tell us how we feel or our shared experiences and they just want us to listen. Kind of yeah. just using that mirroring helps us, both us like to understand them and for them to understand what they mean. Yeah. And yeah. someone in the far back. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't believe they're really being empathetic. It's Oftentimes, certain people will just like to use any conversation to talk more about themselves. And if the individual, a person A, has some sort of underlying cause that's predicated, that's creating all of this stress, but they're not yet comfortable saying it, by person B saying, oh, I know how you feel, that could really offend person A who knows that they're not dealing with the thing that they made. Yeah. 
Yeah, and then just from when I say I know how I feel. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say like feeding off the last two comments, it's sort of like this can easily devolve into like a competition of like who's got more stress, you know, like yeah. whose life sucks more. Right? Uh, yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's not helping. That's not that's not connecting. Yeah, I felt like uh, the first part of our question is um, state and could be state somewhat and then like to build a common ground of understanding with the feeling, but the second part seems somewhat dismissive because it's taking yeah. out of the context of their own problems and making it something. It's not about me. Yeah. I think <coughs> like just being agreeable for the sake of being agreeable, you know, just mm -hmm. to continue the conversation, you know, yeah. or just talk to someone. Yeah. So I love what everything everyone has just said. Um, that was, I mean, fantastic. Yeah. I mean, spot on with what my notes had. So let's look at the fourth one. Um, so happy. By the way, I just want to pause here. I'm so happy that we're that we're. Oh, this is so good. This is, oh, I love how. Okay. Uh, so. All right. So statement pair uh, number four. Person is, A says, I'm freaking out. We have a huge event this weekend, and there are a million things to do. I can't hold. I can't get a hold of anyone to help me, and I'm feeling like I'm going to pass out any minute. And if this event doesn't go well, no one on this campus will ever take SSDP seriously ever, ever again. It seems like the world can end. Right? Uh, doesn't it feel that way sometimes, though? Um, and person B responds, Oh my gosh. You sound so exhausted. Sounds like you're really scared about what's going to happen Saturday. Sounds like it's so scary because you're not getting the support you need. And you're worried that if this fails, you'll lose the respect of the student body and maybe the administration. So yeah, so how do people feel about that statement pair? Was person B actually giving active listening and connecting empathetic? Yeah, very well thought out. Yeah. <laughs> so we have to be able to do that, by the way, in a split second of a normal conversation. Yeah. Right? It's hard, it takes a lot of training, but you can do it. And then think about when you do that, how well you connect with that other person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how that person now feels that you heard all that. So in all that statement, I heard all those things. Even just like having, oh, sorry. Uh -huh. sorry, even just having somebody connect like that, you know, even if it doesn't solve yourself, yeah. it can make you feel so much better that the problem is to become this like, yeah. support. Yeah. Right. Someone's there to help you carry the load a little yeah. bit. I feel like a good uh, response and a good conversation not only um, interacts with the person who had just said something before, but provides them an outlet to just <coughs> bounce off of what you said, and then you know they can say, yeah, I am feeling like this. So there's not sort of that lag, and your, your response not only understands what they're feeling, but provides them an outlet to express and maybe go into maybe a little bit more depth about those feelings. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna take these two, and then I think we have to move on. I, I also think similarly that answers that provide you some sort of applicable solution are really great. I know they're not possible in every situation, but something like this, you know, maybe this would be the comment that pushed them over the edge to be like, you know, like if you see this too, like I really am going to take the extra step and ask my other fellow SSDP members to like really put more time into this, express to them how stressed out I am, and like having someone else listen to your story and come to that conclusion on their own can really help you justify your own actions and know that you're doing the right thing. Yeah. So you got one more hand. Uh -huh. um, also, I really like that it says it sounds like with a question mm -hmm. because you're allowing them to say, no, that's not how I feel. Yes. Um, and you're not putting words in their mouth. Yes. So you're saying like, if I'm getting this correctly, you know, this is what I'm hearing. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Spot on. That's that's very very 